the English learners, this is Kemen and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna cover all the grammatical features of simple present tense. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how to write and talk about your routine or daily activities in English. So let's dive in. Before I start, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please push the button and subscribe. And don't forget to like this video. Let's get to the question that what is simple present tense? Simple present tense or present simple tense, also known as present indefinite, is one of the most common tenses in English. You can use this tense to talk about facts, habits, and your routine. Okay, what is the structure of simple present? The simple present of almost all verbs is the main verb, is the basic form of the verb. Look at the examples. The verb need, I need a new laptop. You need a new house. We need a new class. They need a new car. The verb here is need and it is used in the base form. But there is an exception. When we want to talk about third person singular, we add S at the end of the main verb. Look at the verb need. She needs, she needs an English book. He needs a bigger bicycle. The cat needs to be fed. So when you want to make affirmative sentences in the third person singular, you need to add S to the main verb, like the examples I showed you. Let me give you some more examples. The dog drinks water from its bowl. The main verb here is drink, which is used for the dog, and the dog refers to it, so it's third person singular. So we add S to the main verb, which drink, changes to drinks. Sarah eats dinner at 9 p.m. Sarah refers to she and is third person singular. So we add S to the main verb. It becomes eats. She eats. Let's get to the spelling rules for adding S to the main verbs. There are some verbs that the spelling changes when you add S to the end of the verb. Let's check them together. If the verb ends with these letters, we add ES instead of just S. Like, watch becomes watches. Kiss becomes Kisses. Wash becomes washes. Go goes. Do does. The second rule. If the verb ends with a consonant and letter Y, first we change the letter Y to I and then we add ES like fly, flies, cry, cries. Study, studies. And the third rule is if the verb ends with a vowel and then letter Y, we simply just add S, like play, plays, say, says, stay, stays. Now we talked about affirmative sentences in simple present. What about negative forms and question forms? How do we make them? How do we structure them? The present simple tense has the auxiliary verb do. So we use the auxiliary verb to make negative sentences and the question sentences. In the simple present, do and does, do not or don't, does not and doesn't are the auxiliary verbs of simple present. But they also can be the main verbs. You need to be very careful in this. 
Look at this example. I want to do my homework. I want to do my homework is an affirmative sentence. It's a positive sentence, right? So we want to make it negative. I don't want to do my homework. The first do or don't is the auxiliary verb and the second do is the main verb, means performing, conducting. Do homework, it's a fixed collocation. For third person singular, we use doesn't for negative sentences and for any other pronouns, we use don't. I, you, we, they don't. He, she, it doesn't. Remember, when you add auxiliary verb to your sentence, the main verb comes to its base form. It doesn't get any endings. Look at these examples. Jessica and Harry don't want to get married until they can afford a house. My sister doesn't wake up early. My sister doesn't wake up early. The affirmative form of this sentence was My sister wakes up early. When we use doesn't or does, we don't add s to the main verb. Doesn't wake up. Let's see how to structure question sentences. To make yes-no questions, we need to start the sentence with auxiliary verbs, which are do and does, and then comes the subject. They know each other. This is an affirmative sentence. Make it question. Do they know each other? How do we respond? Yes, they do. No, they don't. Caroline remembers me. Let's make it question. Does Caroline remember me? Yes, she does. No, she doesn't. We can also make questions with WH. All we need to do is just start the sentence with WH word and then auxiliary verb and then rest of the sentence. I want to eat lunch at the restaurant. Where do you want to eat lunch? Where do you want to eat lunch? At the restaurant. <laughs> Let's see how to make simple present tense with the verbs to be and to have. Since the verbs to be and to have are auxiliary verbs, the form they make is different. I am, you are, he is, she is, it is, we are, they are. And what about have? I have, you have, she has, he has, it has, we have, they have. Let's get to the uses of simple present. The first one is facts that are true or that are unlikely to change, like water freezes at zero degrees. It's a fact. Everybody knows it. The earth revolves around the sun. It's again a fact. And it's unchangeable. The second one, we use present simple for situation which is temporary, which is true at the moment, but it may change in the future. Like, she only eats fish. Right now, she just eats fish. But in the future, maybe she tries other things. So it's a temporary situation. It's not a fact. Remember, it's not a fact. It's just a situation.
The next function is for repeating actions or habits. I usually drink tea at 5 p.m. Maria is always late for the art class. It's a repeated action. We also use simple present for schedules and timetables. The exam starts at 10 a.m. The bus leaves at 8.05. And the next one is narration. If you want to narrate a story, you can use simple present. To summarize movies, books, and etc., you can use simple present as well. If you want to, you know, give directions and addresses, you need to use simple present as well. Now, I'm going to read a paragraph about my routine so you can, you know, make it an example for you and write your own routine or daily activities. You can write them down in the comments and I'm going to check all of them. If there is any mistakes, I'm going to let you know. Let's go. I usually get up at about 6 or 6.30 in the morning. After my alarm clock wakes me up, first I brush my teeth and wash my face. Then I get dressed and go downstairs to have breakfast with my family. I always have coffee and lots of fruit for the breakfast. Then my dad gives me a ride to the school. 